Hi, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Melissa Bamberg, Director of Enrollment Management at Hillbrook School, and we thank you for joining us tonight. We are so excited to welcome you all and spend the next hour or so together. Um, tonight's virtual, virtual information session is the first of a series that will focus on specific highlights to Hillbrook's upper school program. Um, we invite your family to ask questions throughout the event and use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Um, after the presentation, we will leave some room for questions and answers. Uh, tonight, we are joined by Mark Silver, head of school, Mike Peller, our upper school head, Ilsa Doman, our Director of Teaching and Learning, and Charlie Berkeley, our Director of College Counseling. Um, to begin, I'd like to invite our Head of School, Mark Silver, to give a few welcome remarks and share a little bit more about the history of Hillbrook. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so um, first of all, welcome, everybody. We are so grateful that you joined us tonight to learn more about our high school. Um, so Hillbrook was founded in 1935, and so for more than 87 years, um, we have been driven by a very uh, clear vision, which is to inspire students to achieve their dreams and reach beyond themselves to make a difference in the world. And when we talk about that vision, we really focus on two different things. First, we focus on the idea that um, every student can achieve their dreams, meaning that given the knowledge, skills, and confidence that each student can do whatever it is that they set their heart to, to be able to do. Um, and then the second part, the part that I think is what really makes Hillbrook unique, is this commitment to reaching beyond themselves to make a difference in the world. And from our youngest ages, from four, and then what will soon be all the way up to 18, students are asked the questions, what matters to you, and what are you going to do about that? Um, and so that has been the guiding vision of the school since its founding. And about four years ago, um, people kept asking us the question. They kept saying, you know, what, what would it look like for Hillbrook to go from a JK-8 and expand into a JK-12. And so finally, four years ago, we pulled together a group of board members and teachers and senior leaders and parents and went through a long, thoughtful process about what that would look like. We visited some of the best schools in, the, in California and across the country, a mixture of JK-12s, including a number of them where, that had been JK-8s and expanded into JK-12s, and then also some standalone high schools. And we took from all of those schools um, ideas of what a great school could look like. And then the and in the end, what we realized and what we came to came to understand was that uh, really two things. One was that there is no high school in this area that is the type of school that we would create. And two, that we were well positioned to create that school, that we um, we believe that our students and all students deserve the type of high school that we are designing and in the process of creating. So last March, our board of trustees formally voted to expand the school from a JK-8 to a JK-12, um, and then we started hiring. And so tonight you'll get a chance to hear from our first hire, our very dynamic head of upper school, Mike Peller, um, and then the second hire, our director of college counseling, Charlie Berkeley. You'll also get to hear from a longtime Hillbrook community member, our Director of Teaching and Learning, Ilsa Doman, who is, um, has been our JK-8 Director of Teaching and Learning and then provides that, will provide that continuity as she moves into that role across the, across the JK-12. So as we look ahead, um, you know, as we make this expansion, we know that we are rooted in 80 years of history and in a set of core values, be kind, be curious, take risks, be your best, that will remain the cornerstone um, of the entire school as we become a JK-12. Um, so we are so excited to have you here tonight. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Peller to get the uh, pro program started. Thanks so much, Mark. I am very excited to be here and there's so much to share with all of you. Again, I'm Mike Peller, the head of the upper school. Uh, from the very first moment that I stepped on campus at Hillbrook, I saw students grounded in this beautiful place. They were grappling with important questions. They were skipping joyfully from class to class. And um, it is with a, it, that is the reason why I, with, with great excitement, decided to enroll my own child into the first grade who's now class of 2034. What I love about Hillbrook, this is a school that understands that joyful learning and rigorous academics need not be in tension with one another. In fact, when they exist together, joyful learning and rigorous academics, when they exist together, which they do here, the result is engaged, purposeful learning and healthy students. 
Central to the Hilbert School, as Mark mentioned, are the questions, what matter to me and what am I doing about it? So I feel like I should have an answer to those questions. So what matters to me, what matters to me is a high school that believes in each one of its students. What matters to me is creating the conditions where all of our students are met with that just right challenge as those students embark in learning that matters to them, that is relevant and meaningful to both the student and to the world. That's what matters to me. And, and what am I doing about it? Well, well, I'm here now to expand what is possible by creating a new type of high school that, as Mark mentioned, is unique to the South Bay. This is a school that will encourage, inspire, and prepare students to immediately make an impact in the world. Immediately is important, not later on in their jobs, not sometime in college, but right now, our students will see the deep impact of their learning show up in their school community and their communities extended. So, so why is this type of learning environment so important? The, the world is changing faster than ever before, and it's doing so at, at an increasing rate. We know our students are going to be thrust into careers solving urgent problems that do not yet exist in industries that do not yet exist. So, so, so why is it then that schools, or, or at least most schools, have remained largely unchanged for the last 150 years? We need to do better. And we will. So as a new division and as a new high school, we have this distinct opportunity, in fact, an obligation to design a high school that will meet the current and future needs of our students. This is a school that is committed to the well-being and mental health of its students and community members. This is a school that will engage students in work that is relevant to them and the world around them. This is a school that will measure the success of our students one student at a time. Our students will learn to seek opportunity and challenges. They will learn to ask probing questions, to do scholarly research, to collaborate effectively. They will learn to build and critique arguments and models, and they're gonna, they will learn to communicate their ideas persuasively. What we are doing, we are doing what the world needs. We are preparing our students to thrive in uncertainty, to live well in and to care for both the world and their communities. We know that we will build in students the confidence and the competence, as well as the courage and compassion to tackle the problems that they will undoubtedly face. Our students will be the change makers that the world so desperately needs as they learn to reach beyond themselves. And we know this will be true because our high school is built on 87 years of doing just that in the lower and middle school. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ilsa Doman. I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning. It's my 11th year at Hillbrook, um, and one of the really fun things about my job is that I get to visit classrooms across our, our campus and get to know all of the students individually. Um, it's fun to see you all here tonight. Some of you are already Hillbrook students and know a lot about the school, and some of you I have yet to meet, and so you're looking at Hillbrook sort of um, from outside. And something you should know about Hellbrook that Mike and Mark alluded to is that we really engage students in, in the study of the world that's right around you and help them achieve their dreams, whether they're four-year-old dreams, whether they're 15-year-old dreams. A few days ago, I was in an eighth grade English classroom and I was watching students in book groups discussing and analyzing John Lewis's autobiographical account of his life and history in the civil rights movement. And they were looking at um, his obituary and President Obama's 2015 speech on the 50th anniversary of the Selma marches and talking about how those things wove together, um, analyzing history, analyzing current events, analyzing a novel. Um, and then I walked across campus and stepped into a space in our hub makerspace where a child was sewing their own pencil case um, using a fabric that they had screen printed themselves after designing the pattern on Adobe Illustrator um, and then building the screen print stencil and then screen printing the fabric and cutting it and um, building this pattern using these geometric transformations and rotations. And these are the kinds of experiences that I'm really excited to be building for you all um, in a South Bay High School. Learning that feels really apl applied that feels critical to the things that matter to you, that has you really connecting right away with what you most love doing um, and what you wanna spend your life doing. And of course, you're all here tonight because you are interested in that story too. And you wanna know a little bit more about, well, what will it actually look like? Uh, what classes will I take? Where will I be? What will the program be like? Um, and so we're gonna tell you a little bit more about that. Thanks Elsa. Um, and as we know, many of you will be exploring different high schools. 
One thing that I would encourage all of you to examine is the schedule. I think a schedule is one of the most immediate and obvious ways to explore the values of a school because how we use our time is, is, is a clear statement of what, what it is that we value. So to dig into our schedule a little bit and to give you a little bit of an understanding of, of how and why it will live this way, um, it is built principally upon two critical guiding principles, one wellness and one engagement. So we have six academic blocks. Um, so students can take up to six courses. These are lettered A through F on this. And what you'll see is each day, there are only three classes that meet a day. These are longer blocks for deeper learning. We want to push back against what is so often in high schools, which is a frenetic nature moving from one class to the next as students pile on different types of learning, forgetting what they did as they transition quickly, but instead to grapple deeply in a science lab and be able to do a, conduct a whole lab, to in a history class, be able to walk into the city and explore the city and use that as a classroom. Whether it's in our design class to have the opportunities to go deeply into 3D printing or laser cutting, we want students to have immersive learning. So that's why we have the longer block, but that extends into the evening. We will have homework that is meaningful and relevant homework, but each night students will only be, be preparing for three classes the next day. So there won't be that feeling of having to switch from one course to the next rapidly. Again, this is all rooted in the science of learning so that we can have kids engage meaningfully. A couple other aspects of the, of the schedule that are important to note. We have office hours that occur three times a week on Monday and Wednesday and Friday. These office hours are occurring within the day when nothing else is happening so that we can ensure a low floor and no ceiling approach to learning. What I mean by that is in these office hours, it's a time both to get additional help because you were struggling maybe on this concept that was, that was introduced, but it also might be that moment when you were so excited by a topic and you know that you could push farther and, that, and you want to engage with the teacher and conversations about that. Other aspects of the schedule that are important to note, four days a week, we are either in all school meeting or advisory. This is time where we will intentionally be building the community um, throughout our school. It is also a time when our diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice in action programming will occur. The last thing that I want to mention are these exploratory classes. Um, these are classes that are ungraded, untranscripted, without homework. These are courses that will encourage students to take risks. I know from having worked in high schools for almost 20 years that so often students take courses based on what am I gonna do well in or what will look good for colleges. What that does is it so greatly limits the exposure to what might be possible passions. So these exploratories are designed specifically to work against that. Whether a student might wanna take a robotics class or an ensemble work, whether they, want to, whether they want to explore journalism or some, some area of history, these will be opportunities to light fires. For you to get a sense of what this might look like, we filled out a potential sample ninth grade schedule. So you could see, for example, a student might be taking math on Monday, every other Wednesday and Thursday, or they might be taking our biochemistry class on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. I imagine many of you are wondering more about what these courses are, so Ilsa will be able to talk to you now about our classes. Thanks, Mike. So like many of the best independent schools around the country, we're going to be offering you all an integrated math experience over the course of a three-year sequence. It's going to combine geometry, statistics, algebra, algebra two, and pre-calculus all across those three years. Um, oh, and an intro to computer science will be one of those threads too. Um, and that's going to prepare you as a student to be able to take calculus um, within your time at high school and, and possibly to advance into elective math courses beyond that. In ninth grade, we're gonna be starting a two-year biochemistry sequence so that in junior year, you can select from physics or maybe an advanced climate science class. Uh, in humanities, we're gonna be studying world literature in English class and modern world history in tandem, which I think will make for some really neat um, cross-curricular conversations there and really help you be applying those analytical history skills and literature skills um, in tandem. In 10th grade, your humanities will turn focus to US history and to American literature. And then by 11th and 12th grade, you're gonna be able to select from a whole range of different seminar style um, advanced electives in humanities. In language, we're gonna be offering Spanish, a Spanish sequence, a Mandarin sequence, or an American sign language sequence so that you're able to grow from wherever you're at in the language you select and, and make progress within it along a few years of study. 
And then all of our ninth graders are going to take a core integrated art sequence um, so that from day one, we're going to be getting you into our makerspace on the high school campus, working with a broad range of tools and applications and materials that are all centered around designing for human needs um, and building the skills and familiarity with things like the laser cutter, the 3D printer, um, with woodworking tools, and but also with the skills and habits of architects, designers, and builders. Um, and we're excited to see how that sequence is going to grow out of the makerspace that we have on the JK8 campus and really elevate your work in those areas. In the exploratories that we have listed here, as Mike shared, these are a chance for you to either dive into a passion you've already really developed or to try out something that may be totally new for you. Um, in ninth grade, everybody as part of their exploratories is going to begin a four-year sequence in health and wellness. Um, SEL is already a really important emphasis of Hillbrook's curricular program in JK to 8, um, and that'll continue to be the case across our 9 to 12. Um, we're also going to really be building those exploratories in response to your interests. So the first few founding classes are going to really have an outsized impact on the kinds of exploratories that we offer, um, as will our founding faculty, which we'll talk a little bit more about soon. Um, so building off of your interests and expertise, building off of their interests and expertise, and really offering some exciting things. And then you see immersives listed on here, um, and Mike is going to talk a little bit more about how that will fit into your schedule in eighth grade. When, when Mark mentioned the idea of doing the expansion work, the school spent a number of years going and exploring some of the best schools from all around the country. And part of that was how might we incorporate some of these novel experiences. One of the things that we saw in a few schools was this idea of immersives. Immersives will be a, a, a true um, differentiator for us. It is a really unique way of learning. What are they? These are three week courses that are academic courses they will be part of the student transcript. They will be approved by the, the University of California system. Um, and these courses, as I mentioned, they occur at the end of each semester. So they happen twice a year. We will be designing these courses so that our students gain practice in solving the problems that we talked about earlier. If we want our students to be able to step into a complex situation and have an understanding of what to do about it, they need to, starting as 14 year olds, have the opportunity to try that out, to get feedback and practice in that. So in the ninth grade year in January, we will spend three weeks with potential courses listed above, possibly meeting with urban planners to study the future of San Jose or local politicians to study civics in action. In the spring, after the humanities program that's exploring modern world history and world literature, we will, with the, with the idea of geography, how, do, how does geography, civics, culture inform the capacity for social impact, we will be traveling all around the world to study topics such as the history of land use and conservation, maybe using Patagonia as the place to study that, or looking at multicultural studies, maybe using Vancouver as the case study there. We know that the opportunity for these immersive experiences, for students to dive deeply into complex problems that are interdisciplinary by nature, are precisely the type of learning that will prepare them to, as we keep saying, to reach beyond themselves and make a difference in the world. And then as you all as students are ready for more challenging courses come all across your disciplines, we've begun to design a range of advanced studies courses. You can think of these as sort of seminar-like um, experiences similar to what you would get in a college level course. These are going to be UC approved, University of uh, California approved as meeting the requirements for an honors designation, and they'll be transcripted with that honors designation. Um, the courses that are listed here is a range that we've started to design and have in mind, but this, like the exploratories, will be another area where we'll be really shaping those course offerings to meet the interests, the passions, the expertise, um, both of you all as students and then of our founding faculty. One of the things that I'm, I'm most excited about, and, and I'm excited about all of this, but one of the things that I'm most excited about is, is how, do we, how do we authentically sort of define what matters to us and measure that? Because that will inform the decisions that students make. The idea that measurements are a proxy for values is something that has informed my work in education for the last 10 or 15 years. So the way that that's going to show up at the upper school at Hillbrook is through our fellowship program. This will be the most prestigious and intellectually challenging designation that we offer. And what it is, is, is it, it will allow and encourage our students to dive deeply into social impact work. 
to describe it a little bit more, in each of our disciplines, math, science, history, language, we will designate social impact classes. And if a student takes a certain number of those, we're, we're right now we're centering that around eight courses, if they additionally design and lead their own social impact pro, um, project, either individually or in a group in and throughout San Jose area, and if they then present their social impact portfolio, not just internally to our own faculty, but to community leaders across San Jose, students will then, if they meet all three of those criteria, be awarded the fellowship for social impact. By designing this program, what we are doing is we're creating a compass for our students in terms of direction. This is the work that matters most to us, and we hope it will matter most to them. I wanna share some additional things sort of outside the realm of academics, but equally important, um, because all of the things that we do in schools is, is about rich learning. Um, athletics are, will be, right from the start, incredibly important to the school, and we want to make sure that no students, especially in that first year, feel any compromise by coming to an expanding school. We've already begun the process of becoming associate members of the CCS CIF, and we anticipate having a robust set of offerings in the fall and winter and spring. What's listed here are, are, are sports that we imagine that we will offer, um, but we will in, in sort of all aspects, but, but specifically here talking about athletics, in April, once we have our founding students, we will be seeking feedback from the students and families about what are the sports that we should launch first. Each year as our school grows, we will be adding more and more teams. We expect to have a dynamic and competitive program right from the beginning. Additionally, we want to make sure that our co-curriculars extend into the performing arts, um, both in terms of choral music and instrumental dance and theater. Those will live both in our exploratory classes as well as in after-school programs. Um, we will additionally be building advanced electives for students who want to take these more seriously. On the right here is the Hammer Theater, which we are working to partner with so that our uh, musicals and theater pro productions can be occurring in a professional theater. I can already imagine in the winter of our first year putting on our first show and families going down to San Jose, having dinner before the show and going into this professional theater, elevating the experience for everyone. And then, of course, as we're describing this program and as um, Mike is talking about preparing rich learning of whole students, um, that's going to help you not only thrive in your next ed educational step, but also throughout your life. Um, one of the projects that we're really excited to be building with um, hundreds of schools actually across the country as part of a mastery learning consortium is this mastery learning record. Um, which will be a transcript that sits alongside for Hillbrook High School students, your traditional transcript, as a record of your accomplishments in these key learning areas, like being an applied critical thinker, being a leader, um, being a creative and flexible problem solver, being a builder of community partnerships, and so on. Um, and so you can think of this kind of like a way that um, students will be supported throughout 9 to 12 to build almost like a resume of their work and accomplishments during their high school time, both within their classes and and then outside of classes in their co-curricular spaces, um, maybe in an internship that you have, maybe as part of one of those three week immersives that you're on, you'd be submitting evidence to a panel of educators and adults in your community to decide to, to demonstrate that you've mastered one of these key skills. And then this would sit alongside your transcript as you are applying to colleges, bringing together um, kind of this easy to see record of all of the experiences and artifacts that you've accumulated during your nine to 12 years that show how much you've learned. And Ilsa just said the magic words applying to college and that is where I come in. And my name is Charlie Berkeley and I'll be the director of college counseling and I am thrilled to be joining all of you this evening. Um, I wanna take a few moments to first introduce myself um, and then give a little bit of my perspective in looking ahead to all of the exciting developments um, of Hillbrook's Upper School. 
Um, so to begin, um, I'm coming to you from the busiest time of the college counseling calendar, which is when uh, high school seniors are um, preparing their applications. And that is the work that I have been doing um, over the past six years with over 200 students and their families um, at a school where students are typically attending around 70 different colleges, um, but applying to, um, to over um, over 150 to 200 schools each year. So um, I have expertise in a broad range of um, colleges and universities and um, have visited dozens on my own too as a college counselor to, um, to broaden my experience and start to envision my students on their future college campuses. Um, and so prior to um, this college counseling experience, which has been um, supported by a range of different other school-based um, responsibilities like advising and working in um, DEI and coaching several sports. Um, but prior to this point, I was working in uh, college admissions at Princeton University, um, where I had the opportunity to um, review applicants um, from all over the world. And, um, and even in your area, currently in my future home um, of Northern California. And so certainly I've been able to bring this perspective and working alongside students, preparing their applications um, for all of these schools um, and especially those that are fall into that most selective category. Um, supporting these directly applicable experiences in college counseling and college admissions um, were two other roles that have given me a glimpse into the world before high school, which was teaching middle school science. And I've also coached middle school track um, and then working in MBA admissions. So seeing what happens after this, right? High school isn't the end, college isn't the end. And from beyond there, students are going to grad school and even further. Um, through this journey um, professionally, I've had the chance to, um, to see a wide range of changing, um, of changing aspects of this landscape. Um, but from the first moment that I heard what Hillbrook had planned for its curriculum, for its student experience, for its location in San Jose, for its engagement, um, I've just been so excited in envisioning how Hillbrook students will be able to adapt to this changing landscape. And that has never been in question for me um, at any point from the very beginning. Um, the world of college admissions is constantly changing. And um, as a college counselor, I see that every uh, single day um, from those small policy-based changes that I remain attuned to at all times um, to the global news that you see in your newspaper and on your new in, in your news apps. Um, and so that is what we are certainly working within um, at all times. And as, for example, the world has moved in a more test optional direction, I have the fullest confidence that Hillbrook students are um, prepared to show their fullest selves through their strong writing, through explaining um, all of their direct applicable experiences and receiving strong and um, strong letters of recommendation that are supported by numerous examples from the faculty who will get to know them well. Um, and then, but as we look at a changing landscape, it's equally important to consider what else is changing. And in my experience as a college admissions counseling professional, um, the strongest applicants, the students who are so successful in this college process, um, those qualities have remained the same over the course of these many years. And, um, and those are the students who noticed what the changes in the world and what they want to change and act upon that. It's students who are engaging locally um, and addressing issues of strong importance to them. And it's students like Hillbrook students who are part of really shaping the culture of their school. And it's those students who are able to reflect upon themselves and their journey and their growth um, over time. And so those are the qualities that the strongest college applicants will always embody. And that is what leads to their success, not just in college, but in life. And so I think that I've been able to express to this point that um, there's so much of the Hillbrook experience academically and otherwise that contributes to this other kind of education, the application process and all of the education that, that comes beyond high school. 
And um, increasingly, uh, colleges are noting the need for students to be academically prepared in rigorous courses, but also they're seeking those students who embody those change maker qualities, those students who engage in their communities, who are comfortable navigating diversity, and those students who, um, who are seeking to innovate and be creative in all that they do. And so um, with all of that in mind, um, I'll pause at this point so that we can continue to look at other aspects of the Hilbert experience, but so glad to um, be here with you today um, talking about college counseling. A few things that we wanna bring up just because they have been questions as we've been uh, meeting with families. Um, one is around health and safety, um, as, as people are, are wondering about a school being situated right in downtown San Jose. Um, one of the things that I will say is that we will build in students the, the, the confidence uh, as well as the skills on how to navigate a city um, safely. That is, that is an explicit skill that we know our students need. Um, this will allow our students as they graduate, whether it's going off to NYU or UCLA or Columbia to be able to anchor into those universities and right from day one, know how to navigate and navigate safely. Um, we will be using Jaffe, um, which we use at our lower middle school as a security service. We'll have um, security on, in both of our buildings and in between the campuses. We'll be using electronic attendance so that we know where students are at all times. Um, and as well, for ninth and 10th grade, it will be a closed campus, which means that when students arrive in the building um, each morning, they are there until the end of the day. That being said, um, because we are committed to using the city as our classroom, we will be taking our students as ninth and 10th graders into the city, whether it's going to San Pedro Market for lunch, or San Jose State as the library, or going to a museum to study some aspect of history. Um, and in doing that specifically, as I mentioned, specific, specifically building that situ situational awareness um, and, and comfort in navigating throughout the city. Um, and we anticipate that in 11th and 12th grade that we will then have an open campus. Um, additionally, as, as we mentioned earlier, we know that we are creating a unique high school, one that doesn't exist in South Bay, and really one that there are not many schools like us in, in all of the Bay Area. And because of that, we want to make sure that the distance from school and transportation uh, is, is not a barrier to access. So, so we have designed our schedule to work alongside both Caltrain and BART schedules. We will be running shuttles from each of those to bring kids fr uh, from those um, trains and public transportation. As well, we'll be looking at the geographic regions of our student body. And if there's a high enough cluster in a given town, we'll be building our own shuttles to and from. And, and lastly, um, to, to link our two campuses, the Los Gatos campus and the San Jose campus, there'll be shuttles that run back and forth between the two of those. Additionally, I want to talk a little bit about sort of the, the growth opportunity, because while this is one school that has been a JK-8 for 87 years uh, and will in four years graduate its first high school seniors, year one will potentially seem small, 60 kids. However, it's 60 kids who will be studying in and throughout San Jose. Again, you know, using the library in, in, in San Jose State, going and looking at all the murals all around the city, navigating San Jose in a way that increases the size and their access to different types of learning. And each year we will build one class year over year so that four years later we'll have 300 students um, getting to 75 kids per class. We're just a short time away from starting to answer your questions. If you want to make sure you're getting things into the Q&A, we're starting to see them already. Um, you've got a chance to meet a bunch of us tonight, maybe for the first time, maybe not. Um, it's really nice to be here with you, Mark, our head of school, Mike, uh, the head of the Expanding Upper School, Charlie as our Director of College Counseling, Melissa, who welcomed us as our Director of Enrollment Management, I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning, and then we also have two folks tonight, Gulliver Lavage um, and Annie Makala, who are not joining us for this um, particular session, but have been a big part of helping to form the program and who will join us at future admissions events um, with that have sort of different focuses. Um, and so you will get a chance to hear from them if you don't already know them well. We are also excitedly um, currently hiring. We are hiring a, a founding athletic director for the high school program. That position has been posted for a while and we already have um, lots and lots of really great applicants. And then we have just posted this week uh, 
job descriptions and, and um, postings for six expanding faculty members who will be those key first people um, to help us flesh out the program and who by the spring will be able to meet with you um, as families and as prospective students to talk about what courses will really look like, um, who they are, what their experiences are. And we're really excited for the interest that we're starting to see in those expanding faculty roles in such a short time already. Hi, um, so I just wanted to um, invite you to learn more and read our upper school course catalog. If we have interacted and invited you onto campus or met you at a school fair, you might already have access to this, um, but using our QR code right here, if you have a phone handy, feel free to um, feel free to take a photo of it, go through our course catalog. If you don't have a phone handy tonight, the course catalog can also be found on our school website under upper school information. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is just the first of a series of virtual events that we will offer for your family to learn about the upper school. Uh, Mike, will you go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, in addition to this virtual information session series, we also invite your family to come onto our campus, tour our space, and get to know San Jose. Um, Hilberg is offering three in-person um, open houses this season, two Saturdays in, in October and November, and then a um, Thursday evening in January. Registration for all of these events are available on Ravenna in the same step that you use to register for these virtual information sessions. And of course, if your family is unable to attend one of these open houses, Mike and I have started to and will continue to um, do one-on-one -on -one individual tours for your family. So please feel free to reach out. Both of our emails are right there. Um, as we get into the q and A, I I will also write both of our emails in the chat as well if you'd like to reach out to us. Um, that wraps up our formal program for tonight's event. We will spend the next 20 or so minutes answering questions um, in our Q&A. So um, this is just another list of virtual information sessions that we have. Academic program is the one we're covering tonight. Um, we highly encourage anyone that's able to, to attend the one in October on Thursday, October 20th. Um, Mike will be facilitating facilitating a conversation with both founding students and founding parents that chose um, to send their students as new ninth graders to an expansion um, of a high school at a local independent school in the Bay Area. Um, very exciting that these students are now in their early 20s, so they'll share their experience both as high school students and how well this very unique opportunity prepared them for college and for life after college. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna go down the list. There's a bunch of questions coming in. Um, so I love that um, you guys are asking questions. Please continue to do so. First question I think was asked uh, during the middle of the presentation. Mike, someone asked, uh, they missed what the second immersive was. If you can go back quickly and just kind of talk about the two different immersives and how the fall one will look different than the summer. Sure thing. Um, so in, in the ninth grade year, uh, in the in the after the fall semester, so in January, we will do an immersive a set of immersive classes that are using San Jose as the classroom. Um, and so the courses will be specific to San Jose. Uh, three again, three weeks long. Kids will arrive on campus, um, kind of set out sort of the 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 um, the agenda for the day, and then very quickly they'll be going out uh, into the city and, and learning about, as I mentioned, whether it's uh, the future of San Jose or civics in action or art in, as activism using, using San Jose as the classroom. In the spring, um, we will be using the world as our classroom. Uh, and, and this is really exciting and thematic and, and built upon the ninth grade humanities program um, as, as um, as Ilsa described, in ninth grade humanities, they will be studying modern world history and, um, and world literature. And so they'll be using those as a way to frame questions around, you know, what are the conditions that create social impact? Thanks, Mike. Um, the second question is, um, I'm going to pop this over to Charlie. What is the significance of a student receiving the Scott Center Fellowship, and what does that look like in terms of designation or something on their transcript? Absolutely. 
Yeah, so first and foremost, of course, um, you know, the benefit of a student getting this designation is that they get to be a part of this program and they get to work alongside um, other students who share their passion for, um, for identifying issues that they're seeking to um, explore further and impact um, in our community. So, of course, that's the first part that goes without saying. But then the second part, as we um, think about how this might be viewed externally, is that this is, as we said, a, a a special designation that students would be receiving. Um, and it's a small number of students. Um, not everyone in the class is going to be pursuing this path. And so they've, they've set themselves apart in that regard first. And then if colleges have questions about what this means, the first place that they will go is to our school profile. And the school profile is the place where it identifies you know, not just any special programs where they will immediately be able to see what does this mean for students to be pursuing this Scott Fellowship, um, but they'll also be able to read about the rigor of our courses and learn about our philosophy as an institution and learn about the nuts and bolts of our school. So it's an amazing resource that every college reviewing the application of one of our students um, will be able to see um, and will value as they grow to know each and every single one of our students as their future students on their college campuses. Thanks, Charlie. Um, Ilsa, the next question is about grades. Will Hillbrook High School have letter grades? Well, assessment is something that really matters to us a lot, and we've been thinking about a lot and learning from a lot of great um, peer schools around the nation and around California. And one thing that we know is that Hillbrook will have letter grades. Um, that'll be an important part of getting kids ready to participate in UC application processes. Um, and at the same time, we want to make sure that ninth graders coming in from a wide variety of schools and starting to take these risks into this kind of programming that might be new to them also feel really supported to understand um, how they're performing and what specifically they can do to improve their performance if it's something that they want to um, focus on. So we'll really be building a ramp in ninth grade to focus on feedback about learning, about learning habits around mastery um, of content and engaging really heavily with kids, not only through um, class time, but then also through those office hours um, built into the, the school week that will let students and teachers talk directly about um, how learning progress is going so that in addition to grades, we're really focusing on um, students understanding uh, how they're performing, how they're mastering um, content and, and mindsets and how they can do that better. Thanks, Ilsa. Um, one question about um, the social impact courses. Um, Mike or Mark, I don't know if you wanna take this one on. Someone asked about uh, foreign language courses and how those work and how will those count as social impact courses? Uh, yeah, happy to answer that. Um, so so the, the introductory classes in, in the world languages will be around building foundational skills in the language as well as culture. Um, but starting in level four and beyond, we'll be looking at what are ways in which people can use language for social good. Um, and so not all of the courses will be des designated in that way, but, but many will. And we're particularly excited to think about how can we anchor that study of language outside of our classroom, outside of our building into the city of San Jose. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'll take this next question on. Um, the question asks, how certain are we that we're going to achieve 60 students in the first year? Um, I'm very confident that we're going to get 60. We are capping at 60. Um, we're looking really to fall somewhere between 50 and 60 in that first year, both with our um, existing eighth grade class that will get an offer to re-enroll for their ninth grade year. We anticipate a number of students will choose that option and join us at Hillbrook Upper School. Um, and then we've seen immense interest from prospective families at outside schools that we've identified as feeders. Um, Mike and I have done um, a few dozen individual tours with families already, and we anticipate getting to meet many more families throughout the year during certain admissions fairs and at open house. Um, question about computer science and what does the computer science look like? Mike? I can also start that one and Mike, if, do you want to add on? Okay, so um, of course, computer science is a huge um, language mindset tool skill set that kids are going to need. Um, 
only increasingly as we move into the future as a way to tackle all kinds of problems and as a way to um, work within all kinds of fields of study. And so all of our students will be taking some introductory to computer science um, as part of their three year integrated math sequence. And then uh, in addition to that, we'll be offering a lot of additional ways that students can be engaging in, in more advanced study of computer science, um, both within our exploratories, um, if that's something that maybe is pretty new to students, they wanna take a risk in it, try it out without it being a graded transcripted homework based course, then also as a part of our um, advanced studies program. So for children who are ready to take that on as a full class um, with that honors designation, we'll be offering um, advanced studies computer science courses. Um, and then there will be lots of co-curricular opportunities to pursue that with um, things like robotics club. Um, in addition, because of the foundational skills that we'll be building in students um, integrated arts course in ninth grade, students will also be using a lot of computer science tools in that human centered design um, sequence. Mike, did I miss anything? Okay. Thanks, Elsa. Um, question here talking about um, our existing campus and how it's gonna work with our new campus. Do we anticipate ninth graders or upper school students needing to visit Los Gatos um, for activities or for certain all school events? Mark? Yeah, great question. So, you know, as we you know started off, we are two campuses, but one school. Um, and so I certainly think there will be opportunities for students to visit the Marchmont campus and to visit our school over in Los Gatos. I, they won't need to, I don't believe, I mean, other than potentially for, you know, maybe a one or two all school events over the course of the year. We All of the programming will be done um, downtown, but certainly one of the pieces that might happen, um, we have a buddies program now for those who are who are new, who aren't part of our community already, which is a wonderful way for younger students and older students to, to connect with each other. And I suspect there'll be some version of that. And so that might, you might have some seniors coming over to connect with some kindergartners. Um, but in terms of like the actual programming, all of that we expect to be done on, on a, in downtown campus. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, let's go to this next question about exploratories. Um, Ilsa, do you wanna just share a little bit more? The question is, are the exploratories just the ones listed in the presentation or were those just examples and there will be more offerings? Right. Yeah, exactly. The latter. Um, and so exploratories are going to be designed in part based on student passions and interest and in part based on the founding faculty passions and interests and expertise. Um, and that'll be a really dynamic fun space because we'll be able to switch up the course offerings a lot more frequently um, as children are sort of um, taking time to join one thing for several weeks and then having the opportunity to move and, and study something else if they're ready to. Um, because exploratories aren't transcripted graded courses, it's um, a chance for us to offer things that are just really unique and kind of fall outside the box and that um, allow all of us, both as adult learners and as, as students alongside to do something maybe, maybe interesting and new together. Um, so the, the few that you saw um, are just a, a small subset of the ones that we've been um, brainstorming, even as this group of five, like what might we offer um, as co-teachers in the, in the upper school? Um, and there would be lots of others. And that'll be one of the things in April as we're figuring out who our founding class is that we'll certainly be turning to students to say, hey, what should exploratories look like? What do you all wanna do? And what do you all wanna do given that we're gonna be in downtown San Jose and there's just so much there. Thanks, Elsa. Um, this next question, I'm gonna shoot over to Charlie. Um, Charlie, someone asked, how will Hillbrook build its reputation among colleges, both locally and nationally? So student applications have the benefit of admissions teams at colleges understanding the rigor and difficulty of our curriculum. Great question. Um, so I can certainly begin in answering this question um, from my perspective here. And I think I can say that the work has already begun. So we haven't opened our doors officially for this high school yet, and the word is already out. And so part of just from my perspective in the college counseling per profession is a large part of the work that I do is interacting with colleagues who are college counselors, but also college admission officers and deans and directors, many of whom I've worked with previously and who I am regularly in contact with. And, um, and I couldn't be more excited to already be sharing um, what Hillbrook is, is going to be is going to become. And so there is that aspect of, um, of of raising the awareness, but then I know that the other part of the question is about what about the academic rigor and how are colleges aware of of this rigor and um, it is incredible 
what can be um, ascertained from a transcript and the degree to which a college admission officer can review a student's entire admission file and truly get to know them as a human being and as a student um, in the short period of time when they're reviewing is incredibly impressive and, um, and that skill is backed up time and time again. And so when an application is reviewed, it's not opened, right? It's looked on a screen like we're all looking at right now. Um, you know, the first thing often that's looked at is that transcript. And on the transcript, yes, it's going to include the courses that a student took um, in, in, a, in a sequence. And they're going to be looking at to what level is a student achieving within each of these subject areas. They'll see those advanced studies courses. They'll see the depth of, um, of the curriculum um, at at Hillbrook. And then alongside that, we're looking at the mastery learning record. And so then that allows to us to go even deeper and not just looking at the student's grade, which is only just one, one number or letter, right? But it's looking at those competencies and how a student is engaging, um, you know, not only in those the subject matter, but on in all of those core skills that go so far beyond. Um, but then students will be working on other things that fall outside the purview of their classes specifically, um, working on research projects. I saw a question about internships and working alongside, you know, academic, academic research, as I said, but really, you know, expanding into other areas and making this practical and applicable. Um, so, and all of this, as I conclude, um, will be um, will be represented in what is a long counselor letter, which are multiple teacher recommendations, where the details of the curriculum are again echoed, and um, the way the student has engaged with this curriculum detailed, in particular by those teachers who um, whose voice is so valued by colleges as they're trying to get a sense of who is a student in the classroom in high school, because that's who they're likely to become in the college classroom. Um, so those those are a few of the things that that come to mind in thinking about you know who is this Hillbrook student and how do colleges understand um, them and all their complexity. Thanks, Charlie. Um, seeing a ton of questions come in about faculty. Who are our founding faculty? What does that timeline look like? How are we building this team? Mike, do you want to share a little bit more? I, I would I would love to. Um, so. As, as we've said a number of times, th there aren't a, a lot of schools that are creating the educational environment that we're seeking to create, that we will be creating. Um, and teachers are hungry to work in this type of school. Um, it is why most teachers get into teaching in the first place. So as soon as the school made the decision to launch a high school, already interest started trickling in months ago. Um, when I started officially working in July, um, a number of colleagues, former colleagues reached out to say, I wanna learn more about this. Um, and so informally, we've just been meeting with educators um, to share the exciting opportunity to launch a school. And, and each time one of these conversations ends, it's with sort of a twinkle in the eye and excitement. People are like, oh, might I be, uh, might you consider me to join? Um, we already have a huge list of people that we know are excited to join our, our community. Too many that we can hire in the first year. Luckily, we have four years to hire some of the best faculty, both in the Bay Area and in the country and in the world. Um, I'm particularly excited about this in this moment because our searches just went live today. To tell you a little bit about the process and how that sort of pertains to you, um, we will be reviewing a whole host of candidates in the next couple of weeks, um, doing phone interviews, um, bringing candidates to campus for demo days, but we will have hired our founding faculty by December. Um, and that's a commitment because we know that for you as you're deciding a school, such a big part of the school experience will be the the mentors and the models and the educators that you will have. Um, so starting in January, um, our founding faculty will begin to kind of share and present a little bit about themselves and the curriculum they'll be building. And in February, we will have a day in the life of where you can come and have courses that are taught by our founding faculty so that you can have that experience. Um, I can I can guarantee, I know, I know this for certain, that we will have some of the most dynamic and experienced educators again, from, from all over the world. And, and this will be a dynamic team to, to learn and build with. Thanks, Mike. Um, next question that we're getting a couple of are, um, what is financial aid look like? And what does flexible tuition look like? Is that offered at Hillbrook? Um, it is something that we're gonna offer at Hillbrook. Um, Hillbrook will have, has a, a 
a robust flexible tuition program that grants tuition assistance already for families with demonstrated need. Um, of our current student body, 32% of our families receive some sort of flexible tuition, um, anywhere from five to 95% of uh, our highest tuition rate. In addition to flexible tuition, um, Hillbrook is launching a program called Reach Beyond Scholars. Reach Beyond Scholars is going to be a program for middle and upper school students um, to fully fund these students and provide wraparound services. These students will largely be um, first generation students of color, many coming for under-resourced schools. When we are fully enrolled, we anticipate having eight to 10 in every grade. In this first year, we'll have about 10% of our student body be Reach Beyond Scholars. Yeah. Um, another question about accommodations. In this first year or two, um, Ilsa, what are the ways that we can um, accommodate students with learning plans or with learning differences that need some accommodations? Yeah, so Hillbrook is already at our JK-8, a place that joyfully um, serves a really wide variety of learners. Um, we think that's a really important part of the way that we build a strong culture and the way that we meet our mission and vision at the school, and that'll be no different in our 9 to 12. Um, some nice affordances for upper upper school students um, having office hours within the school day will give them um, really built in access to a learning support specialist and to faculty um, for um, not only accommodations that will sit within their classes. Um, that's a process that we have pretty well dialed on our JK8 program um, and campus and that we'll be extending into the 912 um, so that students can have um, accommodations that are summarized and shared with teachers um, that are provided across their classes. We also have quite a few embedded um, accommodations that um, external professionals would consider um, uh, unique at a school or um, unusual or an add-on, but that are just part of the way that we teach and learn at Hillbrook. Um, things like access to technology, uh, flexible seating, um, ability to take breaks and chunk assignments and um, use all different kinds of tools. So those will all be coming with us into the 912 program. Um, we're hiring faculty that are ready um, to do that and to be using um, universal design um, features in their classes. And then we will also be um, having, building on our already um, present learning support team of specialists who have expertise in language-based learning differences in serving students with ADHD and um, a number of other learning differences that um, we know will be an important part of making us a diverse and inclusive community. Thanks, Elsa. Um, next up, we have some questions about facilities. Um, Mark, if you can share a little bit more about an update on facilities in San Jose and what spaces will be available for our students in the first year in 23. So we so we have two great spaces um, in downtown San Jose, the Moyer building and the armory. The Moyer building is a 20,000 square foot, sorry, 30,000 square foot building, which will be our main classroom building. And then the armory will be a gym and then eventually an art center. For the first year, the armory will be the built the main building, and so we are on underway, and, and that space will be ready to go for our founding freshman class. Um, and then by the start of the second year, we'll have both spaces. So um, for the first year, you know, one of the uh, highest priorities was to make sure that we both had classrooms and then also a gym. And so we'll have that gym for the first year, so we'll, for our athletic program. And then um, by the start of the second year, we will have uh, the Moyer building as well, and we will be on our way. We encourage you to come and check the spaces out, even though they're not totally renovated yet. They're fabulous spaces. Great, thank you. Um, and Ilsa or Mike, I'll let one of you guys choose who wants to answer this one. Um, how are we planning on blending the existing Hillbrook populations or eighth graders that will be choosing to come to the upper school with students that are brand new to Hillbrook um, and brand new to our school community? I'm happy to jump in, Ilsa, and then feel free to add some some things at the end. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing is just intentional onboarding right from the start, and by the start, I mean in April when when we have that founding class, um, bringing them together early on in the spring, and having a handful of of kind of um, joyful, fun community building events that are occurring throughout the summer. It's it's really important to us that when students step onto campus for that first time, that they can look around and, and identify people that are. That are that are friends that are that are that are peers that they that they have gotten to know. Um, I I hugely anticipate that within a week or two there won't be that distinction of 
old Hillbrook students and, and new Hillbrook students. And we'll do that again, both by thinking about the intentional things leading up to that, but also by um, thinking about how do we group our classes? Um, how are we sectioning students? How are we creating advisories? And we didn't we, we didn't really talk about an important part of our program, advisories where, where eight to 10 students will have one advisor uh, and we'll mix those in, in intentionally both new to Hillbrook and, and uh, returning Hillbrook, um, but also thinking about what's a good configuration of kids that will blend really nicely together. Um, so I think, a, a little bit of, of managing the people in the space to ensure that um, quite quickly all students feel uh, equally connected to the school. Yeah, and I think the only thing I would add is that we're we're lucky already to have built a lot of practice with this at our middle school. We have lots of students join every year, especially in sixth grade, which is a big entry point for us. Um, almost a third of the class sometimes is joining in sixth grade in some years. And so um, our own um, program leaders and teachers have gotten really skilled at building in kind of those early bonding experiences and exploratory experiences for children to share um, as they're developing relationships and helping um, figure out things that they have in common with one another, like Mike mentioned, um, but then also how you carry that through a year long program um, in advisory, um, especially in all school meeting times, which you saw um, both of those showing up every day in our schedule as times when we're bringing people together really intentionally um, to talk about who we are and the kind of community we want to be. Um, it's something that um, even in just whatever week of school this is, week five, uh, the families in middle school who have joined newly this year will tell you um, their kids just hit the ground running and are really thrilled and felt really welcomed. And so we're confident um, as successful as we've been in doing that at middle school that it will be really successful doing it at high school. Great, thanks, Ilsa. Um, Charlie, I'm gonna send this next one your way. There's a question about um, why not APs and why advanced studies and what's the difference between those classes? So the question about AP versus advanced studies or, or other, other names to explain the advanced coursework that um, schools across the country and around the world have um, really sought to adopt over the course of these past several years. Um, and the reason for advanced studies is that it allows it actually allows teachers and students to go beyond the very set AP curriculum and even go deeper and become more advanced and more inquisitive um, in within a certain subject area. And so um, I know that others here could probably talk even more about that um, and the value of, of the particulars of that curriculum. But I will, again, just put on that college counselor or the admission officer hat and explain um, another question that some of you here in the audience might have, which is just like, how does a college you know, understand that um, when they're looking at, at, a, um, at a transcript from a school? And I can say that, um, you know, even almost 10 years ago, when I was reviewing applications for schools that chose not to pursue an AP curriculum, but offered an extremely rigorous set of courses for their students, you know, akin to advanced studies courses, it was not even a question. I would look at a transcript. I looked at the school profile. I said, okay, what is the, what are the most rigorous courses that this school is offering? And then I would learn about those advanced studies courses. And then I would see those pop up on a student's transcript. And then it would become very clear um, the degree to which the student is engaging with that sub subject matter, their readiness um, for the college level curriculum. And then that is again, supported by all of the words from those um, community members in letters recommendation that come as part of the um, the application. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Um, want two more questions and we're going to wrap up for tonight. Um, I did put in the chat, Mike, and my email. So if you have more questions, there's many more questions we just weren't able to get to into the in the Q&A tonight. Um, we invite you to reach out, send us an email, um, invite you to come onto campus and check out the space as well. Um, so our second to last question for Mark is what makes Hillbrook unique among public schools in the private schools in the Bay Area um, that we're different, but what exactly is different about us? Mark, you're muted right now. <laughs> oh, there, somebody had to do it, right? Within, within our market, um, you know, there are no small independent 
uh, no small independent schools. So for example, when, you know, for most of our current students, when they're looking at high school, they're looking at large Catholic schools. Um, they're not looking at the type of school that we are designing. We think that matters. Um, you know, we know that an intentionally small school with an incredibly broad range of programs is important for students and is different from the, what other schools you're seeing in San Jose. We also think our location is, is unique. We are one of only two schools that will be in downtown San Jose with a truly urban environment. Um, and then we also believe, as we've said tonight, our ability to balance rigor with engagement is real. And, and um, as I know, you know, I've worked at some of the schools up the peninsula, there are lo lots of our schools try to do that. We think we have an advantage that being able to start now and being able to build intentionally from the beginning structures. And, uh, Mike mentioned the schedule earlier this evening. We think our immersive program, we think our advanced studies programs, those are all um, you, you know, unique to um, certainly to our market, to this immediate area. Um, and certainly there are schools around the country that have have the examples of those programs, which is that inspired us to try that. Um, and so we're really excited to bring all of that together. And I think there's a, a there's an opportunity right now in education um, where lots of schools are trying to do things, but they have lots of systems they've already built. And it's really hard to dismantle those and create something new. And we have the opportunity to take all of that learning that other people are talking about and, um, and build it into a brand new high school. Thanks, Mark. Um, and last question before we wrap up our event for this evening. Um, for Mike, what are characteristics that you envision are important for the founding students to thrive at this upper school? That's, that's such a big question to end on uh, and such an important question to think about. Um, for all of you to think about finding, finding the right fit, finding a school that, that, that you will thrive in. Um, and that, that's, that's one of the, the beautiful things about independent schools that there are a lot of different schools that can meet a lot of different needs. Um, who are the kids that are gonna thrive? Who are the kids that will thrive here? Um, kids who are excited to build the school that they've always dreamed of. Kids who are asking the question, why are we learning this? But not from an antagonistic way, but because they're really excited to apply their learning to a new place. We're looking for students who want to create an inclusive community where all students can show up to school and feel safe and feel themselves. We're seeking students who have always imagined that school can be better and will be better. Uh, and we're gonna partner with you to build that great school. Deeply curious, deeply engaged, willing to do hard work because that hard work will pay off and students will see that paying off inside and outside of the school starting in year one, all the way through year four. Great, thank you, Mike. Thank you, thanks to all of the panelists. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. Um, I think as you can hear from the excitement in all of our voices as we're talking about this, we are gathering an amazing team. Um, we are designing a program that as we continually have named is both rigorous and engaging. Um, and we are building a high school unlike any other high school in our market. And it's all rooted in 80 years of history and core values and vision um, that we know has consistently provided an extraordinary educational experience that has helped students, not just in school, but in life. Um, and so if that's exciting to you, and if that sounds interesting to you, we hope this is a, an opportunity just to learn a little bit more. And to, we invite you to participate in all those ways that Melissa mentioned earlier tonight. So thank you again for joining us. Um, have a wonderful evening, and we hope to see you at future events, both on Zoom and in person.